It's a real honour to talk to you, Tony, because uh, we, we love big country. Our husbands were real fans back in the day. Um, it's yeah. nice to know the people who helped towards my mortgage. Uh, <laughs> well, here's the evidence of that, Tony. I've just been down my husband's vinyls. Oh, and, uh, absolutely fantastic. Thank he's you. Got, he's got some uh, good ones there, including this brilliant pull-out. It's a great one. Oops. All so, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit bare now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been really busy over the last couple of years because you've released your album, My Time, your autobiography in 2018, so pre-pandemic, which seems ages ago now, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it does. But recently, you've joined forces with a collaboration group, Kindred Spirit. Now, we spoke to Tony Hadley a little while back. He Okay. He, you worked in collaboration with them and did Angels for the NHS, but you've done this new um, single, Think Loud, mm -hmm. to raise awareness of cure Parkinson's, haven't you? Could you tell yeah. us a bit about that, please? Well, I will, actually, because my involvement is sort of slightly not quite the norm, really. Um, my good friend and manager, uh, up until recently, uh, Ian Grant, has been unfortunately suffering from Parkinson's now for the past sort of six to eight years. Oh, and yeah. I've watched him sort of diminish in sort of physical and personality and mental state as, as we've gone along. And uh, and it's and it's it really kind of crossed over a, a very difficult patch for all of us because I mean none of us really have got over Stuart's passing. No, no, I can imagine, I mean, yeah. But the band just sort of dissipate. Well, it didn't dissipate. I mean, I, I left the band officially, officially in um, 2002 after Stuart died because the band wasn't the band for me after he passed uh, passed away. And I didn't want to be part of a, a super group or any of that nonsense. I was in Big Country because I loved Big Country yeah. and yeah. all I wanted to do. And if they couldn't make any music in that form, I didn't really want to know. But I kind of got enticed back into the band in 2010-ish, purely and simply mm -hmm. Radio 2, BBC Radio 2, were going to be putting on a concert in honour of Kirsty McColl. Oh, right. right. The connection with us is that our producer for our first couple of albums, which kind of put Big Country on the map, was Steve Lillywhite. And Kirsty yeah. was yeah. Uh, uh, his wife. So I found it a little bit churlish to sort of think, well, I'm not going to get back into the band because of, you know, however I felt. So I decided that I would go back with the band and uh, would find a suitable singer who we knew that would kind of do the job and do it reasonably well. Because you did uh, do the singing part for a while, didn't you, Tony? I did, yeah. Well, th that kind of came afterwards uh, oh, a right. little bit before because um, we I got together with the guys so we could sort of talk about it and sort of see which how we can deal with it, because I was still very quite quite reticent to do it. And then we, I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to put my foot down. If we're going to do anything, we're going to do it as a three-piece. And we sort of rehearsed for about two or three weeks as a three-piece. And basically, the first couple of weeks was just us getting used to the fact that Stuart weren't there. Yeah, and that that must have been difficult. a huge, huge shock yeah. for you all, Tony. Exactly, but I didn't want to do the super group thing. I didn't want to get other people in and, you know, sort, yeah, of, make, that, sort yeah. of bigger and wider. You know, we were a little club and, and we were always going to be a little club. Anyway, yeah. so we did that little three-piece thing, which is fine, but I then said I didn't want to do any more. And then Bruce got Mike Peters involved from The Alarm. Yeah, yeah. And um, I did think that he was a suitable singer, so I agreed to do it. The Kirsty Bicol gig didn't happen. Oh, right. well, why don't we why just not? carry on? I don't know. It was a mystery. It just didn't materialise. Because oh. uh, that was another then, sad, really huge, sad loss again, wasn't it, with Kirsty's oh, passing? For, for the sort of big country family. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, yeah. you know, Stephen White was, you know, was, you know, the fifth member of the band, you know, when we were recording the first couple of albums. And yeah. Kirsty was always around, and, you know, we were just like a happy family. In that respect, oh, so she passed mm. away. That was a disaster. Um, and then um, we we got Mike Peters in, and we did a couple of we did a tour or two. I can't remember. Uh, and I just I felt weird all the way through it. 
and yeah. I kind of thought I didn't want to be there, but I didn't want to be sort of churlish and ruin it for everybody else. So I, I carried on and I carried on all the way through till 2012. And mm. then I just said, I, I really can't do this anymore. I wasn't enjoying it. No, right. So the band becoming a bit of a parody of itself. And well, um, have your heart in something, haven't you? To, yeah, um... but I wanted, I, I always insisted that we try to do something new. And, um, you know, I'm not going to be detrimental about any other people. I mean, Mark and Bruce I, will always be my brothers. I, I should always love them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And we tried to write uh, uh, some songs and um, we were coming up with some ideas, but there was an element that just wasn't right. So I'm not going to really say any more about that. Hey, it's a bunny cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not really, I don't want to sort of lambast or put anybody down, but I wasn't very comfortable. We did end up uh, recording a single called Another Country, which right. kind of really kind of upset me because I just thought the title was so crass. Right, lyric, right. So I kind of, I, I was starting to think about, you know, what am I going to do next? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Did it feel yeah. like you'd, you were going against the legacy of Stuart in well, a way? It wasn't so much a legacy of Stuart. What what we did was a band who just wanted to make great music and keep progressing. Yeah, and yeah. None of it yeah. felt like a progress for me. And uh, you know, mm. we weren't rock stars. You know, we were sort of more kind of a boys' club that had a bloody good time. You know, mm. and, uh, you know, we weren't sort of rock stars and hanging out at clubs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And we certainly want media sort of um, puppets. So we, did, we, we, you know, the band wasn't that sort of thing for myself, particularly for Stuart. I mean, what the last tour we did with Stuart in tow, I remember having a meeting with him, sort of, and I said to him, "Look, you're in a bad way. You need to sort of hang, hang your guitar strap up and just take some time out." And yeah. from that meeting, I sort of went home and I wrote a song called Dream Boy, which I got on my website and stuff. And uh, it was just my way of saying, stop, man, stop. Yeah. So I know yeah. he went into he did country, mu country music in America, didn't he? He went over to America. And yeah, well, he was doing all that kind of American nonsense. <laughs> I, just, I had no time for it, really. You know, he loves country and Western and I didn't. So, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> We parted ways. Went different ways, yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, um, during, during the 80s and 90s, you had phenomenal success, didn't you? It was one hit after another, it seemed, uh, and one album after another, you know, 15 top 40 hits um, hmm. and, and five top five albums. It seemed that you were going up and up and up. Another promise falling through another season passes by you. And the whole thing was taking a real sort of great direction and um, things, I suppose, started going a bit way, way within the middle when Mark left us for a while. Right, yeah. right. And, yeah. and we, we did the Buffalo Skinners album and we got um, a tremendous drummer in to, to, to take his place, a guy called Simon Phillips, who's right. a, a phenomenal drummer. But it's it wasn't the band, you know? And I think everybody started thinking about, you know, what do we want to do? Are we going to carry on with this? But fortunately, Mark decided to rejoin. And the next couple of albums that we did were were beginning to sound like the band moving forward. And uh, yeah, yeah. the last album, Driving to Damascus, I think it was the best we felt as a band for a long time. Yeah. But what we didn't know at that time was the fact that Stuart had fallen back into his old ways and uh, he wasn't in oh. a very good state then. Right. So when we finished driving to Damascus, you know, we thought, right, we're going to go off and, you know, yeah. let's, let's get back on the road and let's do all that kind of stuff that we used to do with sort of more vigour. Uh, and then he disappeared to into America again and he, he was becoming very sort of, I don't know, just reclusive, well, didn't want to get yeah. involved with anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, I think the, the nail that hits that hit the coffin lid shut tight was when um they were we had a fragile thing from that album released here and radio two were playing it to death which was fantastic of them uh and then there was some anomaly with the packaging on the single yeah. which stopped the single from enter entering the top 70. Oh, that, that's terrible. Um, yeah well the, uh, they struck sales off I, you know the chart yeah. that, you know they have their own ways of doing things and uh 
That it must have been a real knockback for you all time yeah. to have that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was kind of thought, you know, Christ, you know, we're just a bunch of guys who are trying to do our best. You know, yeah. We're writing the music that we think is our best. And you want to mess, I'm just trying yeah. not to say you're trying to mess our lives up by, yeah. By, yeah. by talking about whether, you know, a piece of you. Yeah. CD yeah. is, no fault of your own. No, no. Exactly. Right. So uh, all, all that stuff, you know, it's it's like a cancer. It sort of sits there and grows and makes yeah, you feel. Yeah. Bad. So driving to Damascus, I think, was going to be our, you know, not sort of comeback album because we never went away. It was just going to be the, the next stage, the next volume. But um, that's happening again this this week or this well next two weeks because the the CD deluxe version is coming out, oh, which is really nice. It's, it's, so it's yeah, getting yeah. airing, and it's going to have all. It's going to have all the the demos on it that that we did um, oh, in preparation for it, which brings me to my favourite horror story. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> well, you know, we just mentioned that Stuart went was spent a lot of time in uh, Nashville in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On on you know on on one occasion uh, we decided to go out and meet him and do some work out there and write some songs and sort of knowing that he was trying to get into his um, country and western bit it was up to me and Bruce to sort of steer him back on the rock side you know right, or, yeah. or, 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 or <laughs> country pop or get something. him off his, his cowboy <laughs> <horse. laughs> yeah. yeah get him off his cowboys take his spurs off his boots <laughs> but um, one day I had um, we had a day off and I was sitting in a diner and uh, I was watching American football, as they call it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, the three policemen ran into the thing and they came up and they just picked me up, lifted me off my seat. Yeah. They dragged me up to a police car. And I thought, what, did, what are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, yeah. I was sort of protesting and sitting in the back of the squad car. For a start, they were telling me to speak proper English. And I said, I get more proper English. <laughs> the language, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and I showed them my driving license. They thought it was a Monopoly card because they didn't understand the, the, the right. British doing things. Yeah. And, uh, and they kept on telling me to speak properly. And I thought, well, no don't way. Come from here. You know, anyway, uh, later, another squad car turned up and some guy with pips on his shoulder, I guess he was a captain or something recognised me from the band and said to them to release me. So I went back into the diner because I was shaken by this. That's strange. And, uh, and uh, the uh, the guy who owned it came up and checked that I was all right. And I said, I'm fine yeah. now. And he brought this newspaper with him. And it was the local paper, the Tennessean. And it had a big right. picture of this, I, this, this person that they were looking for, for raiding gas station. No. no. Yeah, so they thought, I held up a gas station because the guy in the picture was a black guy with a black hat, which I used to wear all the time. Oh, oh no. So That's mistaken this. identity, Tony. Absolutely, yeah. Oh. So that put me off going to Nashville forever. I'm not going to imagine. Oh, I'm traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, sort of, and then um, Stuart wanted us to come back to Nashville to do another recording session, and I refused. So I'm not going yeah, yeah. So that we country. finished off the album in Britain and we recorded it at Rockfield and uh, yeah that's that was the last time we sort of really worked as a band oh. in that way Tony is that album most special to you out of all the albums you did or is there a particular one that is each is each, each album kind of frames a stage of everybody's life whether it's personal or if it's just you know the environments that we were living in you know the, the first mm -hmm. album, first particularly Steel Town, we were very mm -hmm. reflective of, you know, the horrors of living in Britain. Yeah. And sort of mm -hmm. life was diminishing in standards in so mm -hmm. many ways. And, and and with the crossing, a lot of it was based in and around Falklands War. Yeah. So there were, yeah. you know, there was just sort of just everything picked out bits of what's going on in people's lives at a particular time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Buffalo Skinners, which I mentioned earlier, was an opportunity for me and Bruce to sort of really get our rock heads out because we decided it's about time we've got some real loud guitars going. Yeah. Around, <laughs> you know, sort of nice, you know, got a bagpipe guitar. Yeah, we, <laughs> we were talking about that. How do you create that sound? Especially your field of fire. It's, 
amazing, you know, the sound. It's very simple, I'll show you. Oh, oh brilliant. brilliant. It's a very simple thing. It's based on a drone. Hear that? Oh, no. We can't hear it, Tony. You can't hear it? No. no. Oh, what it's a One string that goes on all the time. Oh. And then you just play a melody on top of it. And oh, that's wow. what Bruce used to do all the time. So how did, did was it Bruce that found it and you, you sort of, uh, you know, carried on with that sound? I, think it's, I mean, it's something that Stuart was developing when he was back in the skids. Yeah, yeah. Um, I first I, I first met Stuart when um, my little band from Ealing in London called On the Air supported the Skids on uh, their last British tour. Oh, brilliant! And that's where I first that's where we where, yeah. where Mark and I first met Stuart. Because you played with Simon Townsend, didn't you? Right. Yeah. Simon yeah. was my long, long-standing friend, and uh, he's now musical director for The Who, so, you know. Because oh, yeah. you've like played it. with uh, Pete Zend as well, haven't yeah, you, Roger Daltrey? Yeah. So. I've been very lucky. I've I've, I've played with uh, both Pete Townsend and Ray Davies, you oh, know, two wow. greatest songwriters as far as I'm concerned, and I've had the pleasure yeah. of, of working with them both. So Incredible. You, you, you couldn't pay me for for that sort of pleasure. No. That, um, I, when I'm in, I think about it, and it's yeah. great. Because Ray Davis, that was at Glastonbury, wasn't it? Um, That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the, to be standing behind him and playing, you really got me in it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's just oh, amazing. amazing. Yeah, that's just awesome. Fantastic memories. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I, I said my, my memories are so lovely and personal and, uh, you know, I think people like to think that they do great things and like to tell everybody about it and make sure everybody knows about it, but I kind of think they're nicer. Nice to hear. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah. And also the Rolling Stones as well, Tony. You you were, were their support act. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was you know, that's just extraordinary. Um working with working with such a band, uh, and they were they were absolutely bloody friendly with us. They afforded us all the luxuries that they 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 were so used to. I mean, a Rolling Stones dressing room is like half a football pitch. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and to be able to go in there and waltz around and sort of, you know, just sort of be part of their community was just, you know, awe inspiring. To perform in front of their audiences, which I mean, the biggest audiences I think we've ever played to are the ones that we did with the Rolling Stones and the one that we did with Queen back in '85. Oh, incredible! You know, when, when you're standing on a stage and you can watch, watch what's going on. As far as the eye can see, yeah. you know, you just see heads, yeah. people, masses of people. I mean, it's an extraordinary kind of vision, image that I, I will always have in my head. But the stones were great. Okay. And one night I stood, actually stood right behind Charlie Watts. Just wow. so <laughs> And it was just great to see how the band all gravitated towards him. During the, you know, yeah. It's like, I must say, oh, you're right, Charlie. You know, you're having a good yeah. time. You know, you're having fun. <laughs> and Another massive... Another massive gig that you did was Live Aid, wasn't it? We inter yes. we interviewed um, with Jewel and we, he said that there were a couple of people that he wished had taken part in Band Aid and Big Country was one of the bands that he cited as he wished you'd taken part. But you yeah. did, as I say, you did perform at Live Aid. And this is Tony Butler and Stuart Adamson from Big Country backstage at Wembley. What was that like? Well, that was awesome because, I mean, it's an extraordinary sort of, thing to be part of, uh, especially as, as a worldwide sort of campaign to get people to spotlight something that's going on in another part of the world that which, you know, none of us would have any idea about. No. And spotlight it. Uh, from the band's point of view, I mean, it was unfortunate for us because we were on some time off and we couldn't sort of get ourselves together. I was having a party oh. at my <laughs> and I got a phone call from Mr. Geldof saying, you know, <laughs> What what um, I know that the band can't play, but could you guys come along? Yeah. So uh, literally, I just I just got hold of everybody, Bruce and uh, Mark, uh, Bruce, uh, Stuart and Bruce got a flight straight down, and we went there and um, just to be part of it and just sort of yeah. you know to, we were there, but just before the the uh, the end, 
I just grabbed older Stuart and Bruce. I said, look, come on, let's go down to the front because I want to be seen here. I want my mum to see me. Yeah, here. exactly. So, uh, you know, really sort of we barge through the crowd and every year or whenever there's this massive banner picture and there's little old me on the left oh, hand side. Oh, incredible. And right next to Roger Daltrey and Elton it's John. Oh, oh. I bet your mum was proud that day, Tony. She was, she was actually. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, not, it's not often I got her to make me proud about being a musician because she always wanted me to be something else. Oh, did she? Uh, say, and that's all parents, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I'm not asking you for any money. Oh, that changed her mind when she said it. It's excellent. So, uh, very, very fun moment. I didn't expect to be taken down this memory lane. Oh, no, no. Thanks so much, Tony. It's been uh, really amazing talking about those memories. And uh, yeah. obviously... Um, I wish yeah. we'd played. Yeah. I really wish we'd played because, um, I mean, seeing, you know, how, you know, all the bands went down and they all went well, but it, for some reason, and I, I'm sure that a lot of people agree, for some reason it became you 2s defining moment. Oh, yeah. Because, mm. I mean... Bono had, uh, I mean, if it was Bono and Freddie Mercury, yeah. it's the two shining lights of that day to sort of, okay, we're not only trying to bring you the, to the attention of what's going on, but look at us. We're fucking great and we're British, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and the whole yeah. world can see that. Well, not you two, because they're Irish, but uh, it's it, it, a very I mean, shining I mean, moment. Yeah. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm sure that... Um, I'm sure that Stuart would have had a lovely time on stage, given the chance. Yeah. To sort of say, don't understand what you're saying, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. such a shame that that didn't come to pass, really, isn't it, Tony? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's not it's not something I think negatively about. But no, no. no you you've know. got so many great memories that you've shared. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing those. And we know we were, we were only supposed to have 15 minutes with yeah. you. So very quickly, for people to download... Um, Think Cloud, where can they go to? Is it to the usual? It's the podcast? usual stuff. I mean, as yeah. I say, but very quickly about Think Loud, it's because of Ian Grant having this problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I needed to support him. I needed to be, I didn't actually play on the record. Uh, other people were dealing with that. And I just kind of thought, right. you know, you know, there's something, you know, I said to him, if there's anything I can do. And he said, well, look, would you like to just do something for the video? And yeah. uh, obviously it's, it's of no great shakes to do something like that. I mean, all I did was... Oh. Have a look at the it's, it's such a devastating condition, isn't it, Tony? It's you a know? huge devastating condition. Yeah. You know, and when you get to my... T- I'm, a, I'm 66 years old now, and I've oh. I've come into the realms of getting old, getting frail, things not working properly, and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, I've had lots of problems with my legs in the past couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. something like as debilitating as Parkinson's I mean, I, I, I'll do anything for that man, and uh, this is just yeah. one of the things. Oh, oh, brilliant. Well, we'll be sharing it. Yeah, we'll, we'll be, be sharing, sharing uh, where people share can that. And, uh, yeah. It's uh, a great, a, it's a great song. And Leo yeah. Sayer oh, sounds yeah. wonderful on it, yeah. doesn't he? I didn't even know it was Leo Sayer when oh. I first heard it. No, it's, it's got it's, such it's, a rockage. No, yeah, it's great. I just thought, wow, that's that's different for him. So, yeah, good, yeah. good for him. Good for him. To me, I and everybody was... else played on it. I mean, everybody... Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have played in bass on it, but you've got John Ilsley from Dire Straits, and, you know, he's he's no mean player either. So. Oh, that's right. That's it. There's a real Clapton edge to it. I was listening, and I thought there was a, a Clapton-esque part to it, especially yeah. with the, the lyrics, mask, you know, turning a mask to a smile, sort of behind the mask sort of stuff. And you know, Ian Grant wrote the lyrics. Ah, right. Oh, they're really good lyrics. I did, really... I did, I did, I did say to him. I said, "Thank fuck, you didn't sing it." <laughs> 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 he laughed. <laughs> oh yes, he, he's he is. He, when it comes to music, he he just manages it, or he used to manage it. He wouldn't play. He wouldn't get. He left it to the guys who could do it. Yeah, and they did such a fantastic job, Tony. You all did, yeah. and uh, thank you for those golden memories and that wonderful legacy that we're still no playing day out you know we're still playing now and enjoying right. so it's, it's great to be able to keep that going and keeps uh Stuart's legacy uh, well it's, it's nice uh, that you've kept up to date with what I'm doing as well because I've got some more stuff coming up but I'm not going to say anything just now oh, oh 
we'll keep us posted. We, we look yeah. out for it. We, we yeah, please do, Tony. And right, uh, we'll right. share it going forward because oh, uh, we'd love to hear you play again. We want to hear you play. Oh, as you can see behind me, I've got enough instruments to, to you play. Have, you <laughs> have. I was so sad we couldn't hear it. Oh, I know. Gutted about yeah. that. Oh, oh, mind. Mind. Lovely to meet you. Lovely. Right, Take care. Baby. Look after yourself. Take, Take care. care. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.